Um, so our, our next presenter, um, actually, I don't, I don't know Peter, I have to admit. I met Peter for the first time uh, this morning. Um, and all, all I'll say about uh, uh, Peter is that, that I, didn't, I didn't realize that, uh, that there had been any evacuation modeling work done in Edinburgh. I only arrived in Edinburgh 2008, and I was totally unaware of it. Um, uh, but Peter Thompson uh, is technical director for software development at Integrated Environmental Solutions uh, in Glasgow. Uh, got a PhD from Edinburgh in 1994? Uh, four or five, yeah. Four or five, yeah. Um, and the title, I think, is fascinating. Uh, 1994, Developing New Techniques for Computer Modeling of Crowd Movement, which um, 1994, interestingly, I was telling our, my own PhD students the other day, 1994 is the year, just to kind of date how ahead of its time this work probably was, um, was the year that I argued with one of my first year engineering colleagues uh, and mocked him at great length for a couple of weeks uh, when he claimed that he was sending electronic messages to a friend at Columbia University <laughs> via the computer in the basement. So that kind of dates uh, the level of knowledge at the year that Peter was doing his work. But anyway, whenever you're ready, Peter. Thanks, David. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, so I arrived in Edinburgh um, just before Barbara did um, in 91, um, and I graduated with my PhD in 94, and then spent another two years developing that for Windows, as it was then, Windows 3, funded by Lund University as well. Um, and since then I've been in touch with the guys from Lund, um, and also other people in the field as well. <clears throat> so my talk, Egress and Evacuation Models, are running out of time. And that is really a reference to, as much as anything else, the 40 years past and also 40 years future, not just of the field, but also of the population, because the population's changed. So this presentation, I'm going to cover egress and evacuation modelling in general, um, the evolution of some of the maths and the analytical approaches, uh, the data, basically movement and flow. I'm not going to cover too much about response times. I'm going to cover a, a few specific elements. <clears throat> um, Simulex, which I developed at Edinburgh University, a little bit about that and the context of where it is today, uh, and also the data collection that we did. Uh, population demographic change, the fundamental shifts in age, um, and the consequential impact of that along the way. <clears throat> So, 40 years past and 40 years forward. 1974, um, the UK regulations used a 40 people per 21 inches unit exit width method, very basic. Um, uh, there were no meaningful computer models. The global populations, people, were shorter, thinner and younger. 2014, we're all a bit larger. Um, we've got a pretty much the same flow rate in different units. Um, there are more computer models and... <clears throat> In 2054, we're all going to be bigger, we're all going to be older, and uh, there's going to be more disabled people in the population as well. Um, we're going to have sophisticated predictive computer models, hopefully more sophisticated than today, um, and we'll be seeing the obesity epidemic, which is currently forecast. As we're going through, don't forget the physics of flow. So when we look at population change, uh, slower moving people would produce lower flow, larger objects will produce lower flow. So, modelling the physics of flow should consider particle dimensions and variations, particles being people, movement, velocity and variations being speed. The combination of those two, you're changing the parameters and it should change the results. <clears throat> so looking at the timelines across the way, a uh, little bit of history and basis for the data and what's going on here. So 1911, the Empire Theatre Evacuation in Edinburgh took about two and a half minutes, um, a few people died at the end, that was seen as nearly safe um, and has been in the bedrock of regulations for the last hundred years. Um, it is where the two and a half minutes from the UK regulations comes from. Uh, the basic flow rates came through in the 1950s, a little bunch of research in UK, US, Japan. There were a very extensive set of studies in Russia in the 1960. Um, to 70, there was much more US studies and UK studies in the 70s and since then we've got a lot of very standard figures which are used throughout models um, along the way. In the 80s, 90s and 2000s we developed flow models leading on to grid and what we call continuous models which move into free space and uh, in the noughties and the teens um, a few more recent models which are ever more advanced um, and impressive. So 
some of the basic numbers uh, originally deriving into the bedrock of prescriptive regulations but are also used in uh, flow models and flow capped models. So in the 50s, Hank Hankin and Wright, uh, some Russian studies in the predicate um, <clears throat> Along the way, there were a number of different studies done, um, ultimately quite high in certain situations, some lower in other situations, different crowds, different situations, different countries, different uh, cultures. Um, and everyone over the following sort of 30 or 40 years seemed to settle on a standard flow rate of about 80 people per metre per minute. <clears throat> or, as is now expressed, the general rule of five millimetres per person for an 80 people per, people per minute um, in over two and a half minute evacuation time or 200 people a metre for a door. Very nice, simple, straightforward number, but it doesn't really reflect the population of today. Um, looking at the computing flow models, um, these are the basic models. They're basic, quick to run. They use a network of spatial nodes with flow links, which usually are fixed or capped flows. Um, and often have fixed walking speeds of a standard population. Um, let's not forget we're doing life safety modelling with fire, so we're looking at the required safe escape time, which should be less than the available safe escape time. We need to know when it's going to get untenable. How's that implemented? In the basic maths of the systems, the basic flow model analysis, this is a, a screenshot which I did ages ago representing the old Exit T, Exit 89 um, models. Simple node for each room with a connecting arc and a capped flow rate. Um, and very simple maths, uh, you've got a standard flow rate, number of people in the room and distances travelled. Um, runs very, very quickly and actually gives a pretty indicative uh, uh, analysis of, of standard aggregated movement. <clears throat> so the next step on from those basic flow models were grid model analysis. Um, breaking down the space of each room or large area of a building into much smaller subspaces, usually approximately half a metre by half a metre grid to approximate to a body size and movement happens on a stepping stone basis. Um, the more advanced grid models moved on diagonals, um, 45 degrees or 30, 60 degrees, um, making certain approximations about distance travelled, etc, etc, but doing a reasonable job of a, a basic approximation and you can take into account complex geometric layouts. <clears throat> so the continuous model analysis and most Recent models um, developed are these continuous models. Um, Simulex was one of the first ones. Um, uh, some of them use target points for people to move. They've now, the distance and analysis uh, mechanisms have become much more sophisticated. Uh, Simulex uses an automatic spatial analysis system. So it gets increasingly detailed on the spatial analysis side of things, but the basic parameters don't seem to have changed too much. Let's go back to the data and the collection of the data going forward. So uh, there's a few graphs here of different people's relationships between the density of the population, concentration per metre squared, um, and the walking speed of the crowd. So as you increase the density, the speed of the crowd goes down. Now, different researchers over 60s, 70s, 80s obtained different results in that way. Um, typically, the, uh, the US numbers and the, and the UK numbers are a little bit above um, uh, the Russian numbers. When we look at that compared to flow, we see flow, density and speed are interrelated. So as you increase the density, the flow rates go down um, and you've got an approximate capping off. So when you look at the range between two and four or five, that's your kind of general design flow rate, which is where this 1.3 people per meter per second um, comes in or 80 people per, per minute. So Simulex, how does Simulex as a continuous model, um, or one of the continuous models, work that out? So we broke down a plan view of the body so, uh, shape and size as a three-circle body with a torso and two offset circles to approximate shoulders. Um, we didn't use ellipses because mathematically this is a lot quicker to solve and we're making a number of approximations along the way here and computation time is important too. Um, <clears throat> basic uh, analysis of contact distance, which was great, but we didn't have any data to, to actually model that sophisticated system with. So then we started to look at converting distance to speed rather than just density. We looked at uh, the circular packing layout of observed characteristics with Fruin, um, et cetera, et cetera. And by basic geometry, you can reduce that to an interperson distance if you assume nice radial packing of people, which is an approximation in itself, but it gives us a starting point. 
And using that, we broke it down to a linear, well, nearly linear relationship between distance and speed. As one person gets in front of another, then they slow them down. So we had to check that relationship. Uh, we used um, uh, some software I wrote to quantify the perspective um, image analysis system as people walk over spaces. Um, uh, I wrote a, a package called um, Perseus, which we used in multiple sites in Edinburgh, Hibs football ground, etc., etc., and managed to get hold of a few honest students to do lots of data collection for me and uh, start to look at some decent data that we could feed into the model. <clears throat> so we then compared the data that we got from those results and the video tests and compared them against what I derived from the basic front analysis, and pretty close actually, so it looks like we were somewhere near with the first approximation, two points of um, reference, and we aggregated those results and used them in the computer model. <clears throat> so on the left is the data collected, on the right is what we derived from other people's um, uh, density readings. So we then used that, so as one person gets closer to another, we've now got a relationship between distance and speed. Um, also in the same system, we've got a little AI set of algorithms which works out changes of, um, of direction and pace for overtaking, shuffling, sidestepping. As you can imagine, it gets pretty complex algorithmically. Um, uh, it all looks nice on the screen, but uh, there's a lot of complex vector-based maths um, along the way, looking at the potential collision of um, vectors in different directions in the same direction. So we then started doing um, a lot of detailed unit testing, as we call it in software development. Um, <coughs> sorry, the video's on here. here so. um, as we can see, we, we tested uh, standard flow rates for different door widths. Um, we increased the door widths and compared as the door widths um, produced different flow rates. And uh, we got some pretty good results. Um, just by using that um, linear relationship, we got flow rates which were pretty, pretty spot on to the averages which we'd seen from other points of reference, uh, both in regulations and also for standard, reasonably healthy fit individuals in the 90s as they were. Um, that gives us some background about Simulex. There are a bunch of other uh, modern models around. Um, Building Exodus at the Fire Safety Engineering Research Group in uh, Greenwich, uh, Steps, Mont McDonald, um, uh, Mass Motion from Oasis, uh, FDS and EVAC, uh, developed um, in both in Finland and the USA, uh, Pathfinder, which is uh, Thunderhead Engineering's package, and, and Simulex, and there are others as well. Um, the interesting thing is the 3D viewers look impressive, um, and you can be seduced, if you like, by the... Um, sophistication of the animation because <clears throat> it can often over-represent scientifically what's going on behind the scenes so um, after years of people asking we finally plugged Simulex into a 3D viewer um, so this is a, a model of a, a sample building from a BIM package brought across from one of the North American buildings we've worked on um, and it gets the message across very well <clears throat> but there's a danger of everyone assumes that the sophistication of the graphics um, uh, is equaled by the science behind them We've gone to a lot of lengths in Simulex to make sure that uh, the science is pretty good, but it hasn't changed that much over the last um, 10 or 15 years. Um, and you can capture videos, etc., etc. These kind of viewers are similar in a number of, of continuous models. We're not the only ones that do it. So, There's a cutaway mode. You can, you can look at what's going on. You can also look at different scenarios. <clears throat> so the models look great. They've got some nice 3D viewers, um, but what's wrong? So... We have an ageing society, uh, Barbara mentioned it before. Uh, the baby boom generation got older. There was a lot, much higher birth rate in the 60s. Um, and people are also living longer. Medical science is helping that. Older people walk more slowly, so we're going to get reduced flow rates for a more elderly population. People have larger bodies. Um, certainly a calorific intake's increased. Uh, people are taller as well. There's rapidly increasing obesity rates. The larger bodies mean that there's a a reduction in density people per meter squared and that's got a lower flow rate as well so the aging society and the root causes one of the parameters working up the root causes are the declining birth rate in the USA for example the birth rates halved in the last hundred years uh, mothers are having children late to life three or four years later for example in the UK um, and there's a rising life expectancy just since the start of the engineering group at Edinburgh life expectancy in the western world um, increased by 10 years the manifestation of that is that um, in 20, uh, 2050, half of society's population in the Western world is predicted to be over 65. 
um, which is a significant change in population demographics and one in which fire safety is taking no consideration at the moment. <clears throat> Those figures are from the OECD predictions um, just a couple of years ago. So the impact of an older set of people in the population, well, older people walk more slowly. So um, the males and females, you can see the uh, scientific analysis here, drops by about 20%. Walking speed as you get past 65 compared to the average over um, median adult lifestyle, that is going to impact on flow. Slower people, especially in congested situations, start to dictate flow rates. It doesn't require everybody to be elderly or slower uh, or of a different ability to slow the whole crowd down. Uh, that, remember the um, design flow criteria, between about two and four or five people meters squared, there's no room to overtake. So the slower people, less able people, start to dictate the flow rates, which is why it's particularly important to look at the demographic mix of people in that population. So again, <clears throat> we did some tests uh, with, a few years ago with different population types in Simulex, for example, um, spurred on by the fact that the first time the IMO regulations, International Maritime Organization, actually broke down some very detailed demographics for their um, ship uh, population, which were generally elderly and slightly mixed ability. So you can see here, we did a standard commuter analysis pretty close to the standard flow, but when you broke it down to crew, there's a higher, higher flow rate. Um, the elderly passengers, the demographics broken down there, significantly lower flow rate. Um, and also the Swedish Fire Research Board asked to look at life jackets. So people with life jackets produced a lower flow rate as well because of space and time. So older, slower people are going to produce lower flow rates. On average, about 20% slower. So therefore, flow is speed and density. Um, basic maths, the flow is going to be 20% lower as well. So looking at the computer simulation of the elderly or mixed ability population, we looked at that very um, <clears throat> specific population for the IMO and that was 34% less. The demographics have a big difference. Moving on to the other aspect, not just elderly and, and lower speed, but also obesity and space uh, as that affects the flow. Um, the USA has the largest obesity epidemic and larger body sizes increasing all the time, but everybody else is following um, and it's important to note the significant differences on a regional basis. Uh, adult obesity races, um, uh, rates have uh, risen strongly in all countries and by um, <clears throat> looking at the child obesity rate you get a taste of what's going to happen in the future. That's increasing significantly as well um, and we move on to the next 40 years. Predicted are 50% obesity rates in the USA at the moment, which is going to have a significant impact, especially if you have uh, a population demographic in your building population, which has a high prevalence of those people. Um, one of my beefs here is not really just that the figures are out of date. It's really that there's only one figure. Um, so we need to look at the trends there. So again, looking at some basic maths and impacts, Bigger bodies produces a lower people flow. So there's a couple of references here. In the SFP handbook, Jake Pauls, um, who also has been, um, over the last few years, emphasising the need for some of this uh, research. Um, uh, if you look at his charts, just comparing people with and without um, coats, there's between a 10 and 30% drop in flow rate. The Russian analysis analysed um, elements by metre squared of occupied space per metre squared free space because they noticed the same kind of effect as you either reduce body sizes, i.e. children, you get higher flow rates, increase them, you lower them. Um, just a couple of slides which we're also working on, looking at the biomechanics of crowd flow with uh, Daniel uh, Nielsen at Lund University, Karen Boyce at um, University of Ulster and um, uh, Denise McGrath at uh, University College Dublin, developing a, looking at the essential biomechanics of walking in space related to scientific experiments on the body movements in that time. So, um, as you, for example, re reduce the amount of space that somebody's well legs can walk, um, just from a spatial perspective, they slow down. And there's a relationship for that. We've put together some formulas. This is the early part of the work. And you reproduce the same kind of shape curves as um, you see from other experiments here, uh, that elderly people, you have a lower flow rate. Children, you have a higher flow rate um, compared to the, the average, if you like, of what we call young, fit adults. So we've spoken about the physics of movement. Um, what about the other aspects? Smoke, for example. Well, 
the fractional effective dose model that Dave Purser um, developed is still um, holding strong, but we haven't really modified that for different population demographics at all yet, um, and probably should be. Uh, also, we should be considering things like pre-movement times, response to alarm and smoke, which, with a much higher elderly population, will also be, be affected. So how does this all affect design? Uh, population trends, generally, if we take the rule of thumb, there's a 20% lower flow rate going forward because of the um, propensity for elderly in the population, generally. The obesity, look at the trends there for 2050, particularly worrying. Um, taking a rough approximation of the points of reference, 25% lower flow, but it's not yet an exact science. And again, you know, I, I would uh, caution against using single numbers. Um, the implications for flow, if you do the basic maths, um, multiplying those two factors together, you're going to be getting of the order of 30 to 40% lower flow rates in those populations of the future, and also the populations now, particularly in different occupancy types, are going to be affected. <clears throat> so, to summarise... 40 years past, now, and 40 years ahead, um, 1974, the bulk of data being collected for modern analysis, all the prescriptive regulations use those figures still, um, and there were general hand calculations for general design. Um, <clears throat> nowadays, we do have advanced computing models, but some of the basic science behind it doesn't reflect demographic change and is, isn't that sophisticated, um, certainly not in step with the current modern trends. Uh, so, what does that indicate? Well. We're going to need bigger doors because the flow rates have changed, the doors are bigger. And lastly, going forward, 40 years, cloud computing, we're going to have a much larger, older population um, with an increase in power. I'm hoping that the models are going to be um, uh, increasingly sophisticated and reflect the population demographics as well. Okay, thank you. I've not seen any yet. Uh, in fact, <clears throat> a lot of the scientific aspects and investigations of evacuation modelling um, haven't seen a huge amount of investment in time research over the last few years. There's a few groups doing stuff, the Greenwich University, um, but I've not seen a huge amount of um, uh, information back about things like the response time uh, of elderly people, for example, um, and, and the way the population trends are affecting that. Yes, yeah. Uh, in fact, I mean, I've really only highlighted one area, which is just the basic flow rates and the movement. Um, but that's certainly not the end of it. Um, certainly, as we've got, I mean, if, if, as the predictions are at the moment, if half the population is over 65, response time is lower, and you know, eyesight isn't quite as good at that age. If you've got a very high percentage of people in building occupancy, you're going to need to start catering for it. Yeah, um, another area which definitely is looking at is the uh, uh, sort of family grouping that happens in assisted. Um, at the moment, I don't think any models really properly um, incorporate that. But that that does. I mean, like I said in the in the sustained flow rate areas, the less able people dominate flow. Well, that's going to be even more exaggerated when you've got somebody assisting them at their lower pace. So uh, uh, it is a worrying thing. And, and when you break down the numbers of the OECD. Um, population trend uh, predictions and um, from the impact of kind of life safety design, it's not really being accounted for yet. Peter, uh, given your knowledge of the demographic trends and Barbara's uh, suggestion about life cycle of buildings, um, you're using your models, and other people are using your models to design buildings today that will be around in about 150 years. What input data are we using? But well, we're still using the input data from the 70s and 80s. That's the problem. Um, uh, very little has changed, and uh, it should do. Well, what's that say about the first in the area? This area has been neglected so far. Um, uh, over the last 10 years, things like the obesity epidemic, um, the ageing population have slowly started to become more 
um, shouted about, um, but you know, it's, it's an area that appears to be neglected at the moment. So. There's one more question over here. Yeah. Tony Pierce, 6015, and actually probably a good follow on from uh, Jim's. Um, it's probably more provocative thought than a question. Uh, the scientific community is coming to realise that populations are changing, we need wider exits. How much of that knowledge is actually then filtering through to the regulatory authorities? Because current practice is, if I'm designing a building for an occupancy of X, my building control officer says, if you apply these old equations, I will approve your design and you will be allowed to build it. Do we know if it's safe or not? Um, yeah, I was on the IMO committee meeting about 10 years ago, when, 12 years ago maybe, when <clears throat> Um, they have this beautiful definition of the elderly population. I guess they must have from, from ticket information or whatever. They must have a lot of information there. Um, but in the regulations, they were recommending a 1.33 people meter per second flow rate. And, and, and I said, uh, well, you know, if you feed that population into a decent computer model, you won't get that flow rate. But there was a real reluctance to change because nobody had gone through a kind of rigorous scientific testing of that process um, so that no, they didn't change it. Um, and at the same time, uh, the guidance also said that you should and could model counterflow um, in, in the models for ship evacuation. But when I asked the question, does anybody know of any research which actually has measured or quantified counterflow, nobody could refer to anything. So the models were modeling it, but each model had implemented their, the programmer's own implementation on what would actually work rather than a proper scientific basis. So there's a reluctance to change at the moment. Okay, I think I think in the interest of people's stomachs, we will uh, we'll end the discussion there. I'm sure you can grab Peter. Thanks again. Peter. Okay. Thanks.